You know where we got this? We found this down in the woods. Um, Don't you remember? Mm -hmm. Standing there, looking in the woods. Yeah. When we were there, we saw the old enemies they don't make anymore. Guess what? What? We know, but I know what we're going to fix out this is. What? We're going to fix that black Corvette car we saw earlier, right? Yeah, it's a, that was a Z24 or something. We anyway. should... We're going to... Okay, I finally gotten to the point where I, I think it's reasonable to start moving forward again on the MG. So, I pulled the hood off. There it is. I'd already stripped most of the stuff off the engine. I've gone through all the stuff. So we're ready to, I, I need to start getting deeper into it. The motor did run. When we pulled it out of the forest, I was able to get it running once it was here. There are the valves. Again, the car didn't run for 36 years and it sat in the forest. So, I mean, for sitting in a forest for 36 years, that's, that ain't bad. Daddy, buddy. One second, buddy. Dude. I'm just putting this back on here. There we go. Daddy. Uh, hang on, Sebastian. Oh, I know the keys. I'm excited. Yeah, so we're going to pull it. Um, I got to make some more changes. It's got the old upside down multi part non canister oil thing, and that's ridiculous. So I'm going to put them on one of the aftermarket ones, or actually not aftermarket. It's one of the later style ones. You can bolt it right on, so you can so we can take oil oil filters. So you know the keys. I know, I know, I know the keys. I know. Hmm. So I mean, I got you know everything off, and I'm just just looking in here. That's where the rust stripped everything down to the primer, mm -hmm. and the engine obviously looks like it was. You know, leaking a whole bunch and some other stuff. I'm not sure what we're going to find in there, but I have to get an engine jack stand and we're going to pull all that crap out. But the next thing happens, next thing we're going to do is these fenders are going to come off. They're going to come straight off because even though this MG is a unibody, the front fenders come off. They, this is a metal seam right here and it unbolts all the way down. And then you unbolt from under there and you can get at the whole front thing. So we're going to get these off. We're going to rebuild the entire front end. I had already ripped apart one side because it was so rusted, I couldn't get the wheel off. So I literally had to disassemble the entire front end. But I'll rebuild all that stuff. And again, this is the blaze orange color that everyone in the 70s painted their MGBs because it was such a super popular color. It's the same color, actually, as the, that Seiko uses on the sweep hands on the blue 6139-6000s. But here are all the here are all the layers of paint, and I'm pretty excited about that because we're going to take it back to that. There's the original primer and the original paint. I mean, how many paint jobs does the damn thing have? One, two, three, four. I have six, unless there's a coats. Seven coats of paint? Is that possible? That's bananas. I did I did this. I was trying to figure out there's all this damage here, but this old style dash is gonna go. We're gonna get one of the newer ones. Oh actually I already have it. Not one of the newer ones, one of the new old ones. Oh we got the keys. I know we've got the keys. Look, I know you're so proud. I'm proud of them looking at your keys, eating your fudgesicle. So I guess that's it, folks. Um so we're gonna talk more about this. I'll, I'll talk more about it. Um, as I start to pull the fenders off and strip the chrome and the bumpers and start really, you know, getting it down to the real base, base stuff. I've already done a lot of work. Besides stripping the engine, starting to pull some of the glass. Also, already cut out the floor of the garage, of the, of the trunk because that floor was what the gas tank was bolted to and the whole thing was just rusted garbage. So I cut I cut that out myself by hand. I, I broke all the spot welds. I have a handmade replacement made on the original jigs. We're gonna put that in, but first I'm not gonna do that stuff till we finish doing redoing the entire rear end. So I can, you know, I'm gonna have a lot more access to it. That's nice. See the original red under there? 
I mean, it's not in bad shape. It's got rusty floorboards underneath the front, but they, they almost always do. But the structure is solid. Structure is fine. So that's good. Alrighty then. So, you know, you see more of this stuff. This is all the loss. The guy had it underneath a, an old cloth cover, which was probably new when he put it on it, but 36 years in the woods and that's the end of it. This car is going to look great, great when we're done. Yeah, look at all the rust on the floor under the driver's side. It's going to be red exterior, all red interior with black piping on the seats, full leather interior. Um, it's going to have the early style dash, uh, which looks like, hang on a second, the early style dash. Like that, they're really pretty. Okay, hang on. Um, so you said you want to have the lockdown like racing posts here with like the 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 things the locks through through the hood, right? And you want to have you said you want to have a big air scoop on the hood here, yes? Huh? Well, I, I wonder what we're gonna feed all that air to, or if we're gonna go that fast to need those. But I will take that under advisement. Do you think that's be a good idea? Is that what you want? I'm asking you. You think that'd be cool? Alrighty. All right. I'm moving. Oh, that's why I was filming. Sebastian just did his first ever piece of work on this. The old weather stripping was still on here, and he helped me pull it off. So it all came off nice and clean and smooth, and we are moving ahead. Yep, so I think that's just about it. Um, we're gonna start ripping it apart. We're gonna get it going. It's gonna happen. 